What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Barcelona Football Manager 2022 Rebuild Series. Leave a thumbs up on the video if you're enjoying this. So, as I said in the previous episode, we're going to get into this next one playing Valencia and Mallorca. And then you can see there's an international break after that. So, that will coincide with us then starting to play a bit more off camera. Uh, once more, like I said in the previous video as well, uh, different to what I mentioned at the start and introduced this like, oh, yeah, we're going to play every single game. But then when really realizing it's going to be a longer term project than I thought it was probably going to initially be where, yeah, I wasn't sure how bad things were money-wise. Uh, I wanted to see how it was for myself. But anyway, uh, yeah, we're going to start to see it like that so we can get more focus of our development at the club as well, which is it, development, rebuild, they go it hand in hand together, especially when the money now is, yeah, nothing special. You know, we're not really going to be spending anything uh, because, I already touched on that. We can't make a good enough signing. A good enough signing, quality player, yeah, would send us into the red. So just put ourselves in a good position for next season and then see what the budget's looking like for next season. First season is, yeah, blooding these, you know, young players at Barcelona already and seeing if the youth academy can just pro provide enough talents in itself will be interesting. So, yeah, we'll be getting more deeper into things, but let's get into this game against Valencia. Real Madrid actually dropped points. Yeah, they lost the game. You can see two games played and only three. So, yeah, good opportunity. Of course, yeah, our biggest threat. So we'll head into this game. For me, Valencia, but they're 14th, but we're very early in the season. They've always had a few... A few good players, but then in comparison, usually in comparison, <laughs> Barcelona would have a way better team. Um, I'm not sure this time around. And also, Pedri is still on holiday, so he's just taking a break. Uh, I really want to use him. For me, he looks like a ready-made player. Like, f don't look at his age. And if you're just judging that profile of attributes, like, doesn't he look like a ready-made player? But then you realize he's 18, he's going to improve more, but he's got 17s and 18s. Man, that's mad. Like, he looks like a fully developed player and a pretty good one. Then you got to realize he's a wonder kid, he's going to grow more. That's definitely scary for opposition, but yeah, unfortunately we can't be using him at the moment. Uh, I think a couple of these guys that don't have the sharpness, apart from Fatih, because we've got, yeah, got to be careful with him. Just make him available for the B squad. Yeah, get another look at Demi. I think it was said in the comments, yeah, that we should really go for him. It's a bargain price, really, because he's a wonder kid. 8.5 million. I mean, he doesn't have a description of a wonder kid, but he's got high potential that could be similar of a wonder kid. So, yeah, uh, we'll see how he continues to progress during the season as well. I like the look of him. He needs to improve a bit more. But, yeah, De Jong showed a lot in the first game. Let's see if he keeps up. Um, scoring, as I said, I wouldn't say he's a world-class striker, but he's an, he's a good, experienced striker that if we provide him with chances, yeah, he's going to show that he is that. <laughs> I like, yeah, describing him as an experienced striker where, you know, he's going to take chances if he gets given them. You're not relying on him individually to, <laughs> yeah, win the game on his own accord and creating and all that. Yeah, he's just doing the job of the striker. Not someone that's individually, say, really pacey and focused on getting through balls into. Yeah, he's got multiple parts of his game. Like, he could just get, <laughs> yeah, wait to get that final ball in the box and then just, yeah, one-touch finish or a header. Yeah, he's dangerous. Dangerous in multiple areas. Yeah, carry off from the last performance. Or attackers, not too many. We'll say, okay, we'll leave that. We almost had like the same amount of positive reactions from the bench to the starting 11 players, but uh, we're going to get into it now. 20 minutes in now, haven't seen a chance. My always go-to is the encourage. We get a chance a little bit after that. Let's see, Maybe as we build up out of the back, you can see our approach in Memphis. He's, he's going to be key this season. Oh, Demir gets it down to De Jong. De Jong, oh, that was the right idea. You look what we were trying to find there with Dest. Gets through the middle, De Jong. With this really quick play. And then spread it. Jordi Alba, this is where we're dangerous. When the fullbacks get into that position. Now Busquets. Now Pika. Oh, a chance has to come here. Has to come. De Jong, oh, that's... Hopefully that's given. The referee 
blue for offside, but I don't. It didn't look offside. I don't think that's going to be given. No, like that. I guess it's realistic. Yeah, so many goals are being reviewed, but like that was never near. Like, <laughs> oh, they're reaching for it a bit. But it's realistic as well. Like so, like goals are always reviewed, but I don't think they need a show. It's like it's oh, we're going to VAR. Especially when it was nowhere near offside. Just how that chance was. It was, yeah, how the cross... The striker was always behind or in front of the defender, which depends which way you see it. Uh, but you know what I mean. Yeah, he was always in an onside position. So pretty in control of the first half without really yeah, showing that on the scoreboard. Like 1-0, uh, still need to finish off the game a bit more, uh, stronger than that. But yeah, we're happy controlling the game possession-wise. Uh, just get get that on the score sheet. So here we go. Memphis, De Jong, move real quick. <sighs> that one-touch football. Okay, oh, is this going to be another red card? I can almost tell. No, <laughs> that wasn't it at all. And then Demir. Ooh, we've had chances though, man. We've had true chances here. See, Demir, admittedly, he's been the worst out there on a 6.3 rating. We don't, <laughs> Fatty, at least when he gets ready to come back. But you can tell there's a lack of strength in the team. I guess we could fast track the development of someone like a Ah, uh, He's more, he's not even natural as a winger. He's natural fullback. You see what I mean? But it's like, we don't have another option. He's left footed. So you can have him as that inside cutting in. But yeah, I don't even want to Yeah, change too much else. I think we're going to up the tempo by one and just, yeah, should the shorter passing as well. Just moving each by one spot there. But it would look nice if this results to a goal. See, that looked offside on first appearance. So we're going to take a look. That I feel like, yeah. <laughs> I feel both didn't even need. We saw it on real time. Like, yeah, in real time. Yeah, could tell. I should be the VAR. Like, I just feel they're a bit much. I guess that time made sense, but it was really obvious that it was offside. Lonle to De Jong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, went. Oh, well, yes, that's going to be great. There's going to be a penalty. That has to be there. I was expecting us to go down the left. So if I'm getting confused, <laughs> how about our opponents? And that has to be a penalty, how that looked. Yeah, penalty awarded, no doubt. No doubt about that. And then, who's going to step up? Is PK Roberto? Gerard Pique. Pfft. So good. Shows his experience. He's a pretty good penalty taker for a defender. He's composed in that situation. And yeah, that experience doesn't lie. Because if you actually look here, our best pen takers are only like at 13 penalty uh, taking. But Gerard PK is that 16, so yeah, he's he's class. That's why I say, yeah, it takes priority over the others. And see, now I feel more comfortable to make another change. What I mean is if we take a Busquets, uh, put Frankie De Jong there, this is going to start to be a regular change you make. We'll bring on Gavi. Maybe start to get some fitness into... Ooh, who do you... Uh, um, see, I feel, you, I feel like Ronald's... He's 22. He's got a bit more growth. I think we have to prioritize using him over Antiti. He's got some really neat attributes, doesn't he, as well? So, yeah, he's he's going to come on now. And it looks like we're just going to play this out pretty simply and hold on to this 2-0. They're trying to switch up formation, but Jordi Alba, corner. Oh, they might get a counter. Is there a slight hope? Now it's Guedes. Late chance. It's another conceded goal. Is that going to count? Again, appealing for offside, but it didn't look offside. That did not look offside. No, ignore that, but... Ooh, ah, yeah, I can understand, but he looked in line. So, another... <laughs> another clean sheet bonus avoided. Saving a bit of money. I mean, it's, it's disappointing conceding, but it's probably not major money, but anything right now for Barca is a positive. But I think we were really good. We were better than the scoreline showed. 
Like, and we had like, what, th at least three chances, I think. Two or three chances we wasted. So, hey, that money's gonna help. <laughs> Good Champions League group stage. Just puts it a bit extra on the balance. It's such a weird feeling focusing on financials with a club like Barcelona, but it makes it really interesting trying to build up Barcelona's balance and not relying the club to provide that. I mean, mate, you what, don't brag about that. You did nothing. <laughs> They're in the Champions League. But anyway, yeah, just going forward anyway, it's going to be yeah intriguing how we see that improve. So view the draw. A good time for this episode as well because it coincides with having a Champions League draw. So uh, we'll go through all the initial ones there. <laughs> so Villarreal seeded first and yeah, second seed. There's a lot of big clubs here. So I think it's a dub if you manage to get Lille or Sporting. If you're, if you're looking for the easiest draw, you guys probably want maybe a group of death <laughs> to make it interesting. We'll see. Liverpool get Villarreal. Hey, we'll take that. Sporting is probably... Probably the easiest. Lille's probably next. So, yeah, you take that. We'll go through all the rest. United, Inter, Man City, Dortmund, Chelsea, PSG. Some others could be shaping like a group of death. Bayern, Real Madrid, Atletico. We'll get Juve there. Now on to the third seeds. Porto. So, Group A, a bit challenging there. Villarreal, Porto will be fighting for that second spot, you'd think. So, who are we going to get matched with? Zenit. Decent name, but they're not, yeah, they're nowhere near going to challenge us. So I think it's going to be a relatively easy group, yeah, easy Champions League group. <laughs> we got away from a group of death, and there's no one really, yeah, out of those. You'd probably say Porto is probably the best team. Oh, Leipzig. So Group C is probably a bit tricky. So, and the best here is Monaco, Monaco and Milan. That's going to be drawn. Group A, Monaco. Olympiacos. Yeah, that's going to be a relatively straightforward group for us. But imagine, yeah, if Milan gets Group C. Oh, that would have made it so interesting. But wherever they go... Oh, really intrigued now. Maybe Group G? Nah, it's going to be Group F, which makes it interesting. They're kind of the middle of the ground team. Like, they're not, like... To be honest, at this level, apart from <laughs> the last team that was drawn, the Ludogorets... There's no, like, maybe, like, Besiktas as well. Hopefully there's no fans of Besiktas out there. But, like, there's, like, clearly Ludogorets. They're, they're the only, like, yeah, <laughs> that e really easy beat in the Champions League. Like, there's no, there's no shocking team that's there. Maybe Rangers as well. But I think it'll be a competitive, yeah, group stage. As much, I think we're in an easy group, but as an overall, you know what I mean? There's not many of those specific groups. There's some balanced ones, like I said, like how Group F is looking. And maybe Juve and, Af and Atletico have, like, Dynamo Kiev, yeah, as well. Maybe they have an easy group. But for the most part, <laughs> and I guess Bayern and Real Madrid. But yeah, I think it's, yeah, pretty good group stage. Champions League uh, teams that have got to this point. There's not too many of those easy beat teams on that real, like, you have to be on your game. You can't just play uh, play your second side against them. So, yeah, I think we have a good group, though. And even another challenger as well, Atletico Madrid. Uh, they dropped some more points there. They've already lost and drawn a game. So, yeah, getting an early lead on those guys. The, the teams around not worried as much. We're ex yeah, expecting like Levante, Cadiz. <laughs> expect them to drop down. And look at this, Pedri's being called up to the Spanish squad already. Like I said, he's first team quality. He's replacing Sol because uh, he gets his injury there. So he might, for me, uh, for me, they're two different players. Sol is uh, a bit more, you know, balanced as a central midfielder. Pedri's more a central attacking midfielder. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, uh, different types. La Liga, Coke steals the show. I know it's probably not pronounced like that. It's like Coke, <laughs> but... What a title. I know there has to be balanced social media reactions, but Eric Sanchez, chance of a redraw, we've got no hope whatsoever. Really? Just to make sure he's talking about us? Yes? Like, like, what are you seeing, Eric? Like, what are you seeing in that Champions League draw that it's going to be so hard for us? Like, Zenit, Lille, and Olympiakos. How far have Barcelona fallen in some fans' eyes? 
but that's because it's scripted to be balanced. And that didn't seem, that's not like a Twitter troll. <laughs> that, he, he feels serious about it. He would probably have his, you know, profile photo as well. So yeah, like what he says is like legit. He actually believes. So you would, you would listen to his opinion. <laughs> like I said, if he didn't have a photo, yeah, no, no credibility. But yeah, we'll hop into the next game now. Keeping in mind, there's the, the international break that we mentioned. But yeah, as we push on, we're going to start to play more off camera now. As we just target someone like a Pedri, and that's just one player. There's more young players to focus on. But yeah, to see the career progression, whether it be uh, five plus seasons, yeah, it's going to be the way forward. And you can start to see we're going to be... Why? This shouldn't be impacting league games. Is that wrong? Or like, get up in the comments. But anyway, we won't be able to use Dest. That that's the, that doesn't seem right. That shouldn't coincide with a league game. This is not the conference. <laughs> oh, that that just doesn't feel right. So maybe exploiting our flaws a little bit when we don't have a direct replacement. We're gonna put Sergi Roberto. I knew there was a change that could be made there. Poof. No, not Eric Garcia. Give Gavi a start. No, I just want to put Pedri right in there. Who cares if he's not fit? Like, yeah, he's this is this is where he's going to get his fitness. Chuck him right in there. Chuck him right in there. And even Coutinho as well. He's coming back, but yeah. So Roberto is going to go back to that right back position. And I, I like that lineup though. Like you got Busquets behind De Jong and Pedri, but yeah, De Jong and Pedri as the creators. That's quite enticing. But yeah, let's get into it. Uh, dressing room now. I expect Mallorca we should be quite strong for. We're fr yeah, favourites for a reason. We'll say that. Generally, it doesn't get too much of a reaction. So we just point finger. Start to inspire. There we go. Try to make the difference. And I almost feel like another reason for signing Demir is we're using him. Hey, we're forced to use him, but that's giving him, you know, development as well. Early development. Get a first look at Pedri. Yeah, first game and see how he fits our system now. I think he's going to be so good, not going to lie. He's coming in. Oh, how's Kangin Lee? I remember him. Yeah, he's still young, but interesting. Continue. We're not seeing a lot early in Courage. What, what we're, we've started like pretty well this season, but I want to know what's our approach when we need to look for a goal. Okay, Pedro, almost score. What would you guys suggest in our setup? We'll see what comes from this. Roberto gets that cross in and De Jong almost. Yeah, what do we go direct or is it just upping the tempo really high? Like, yeah, increasing the tempo to a higher level because direct would change, yeah, change the game a little bit. Long kicks, so easy to... D okay, uh, there's Fernino. <laughs> is, that, is that like a Spanish Fernino? Oh, he's going to score here. It's Fernino. <laughs> it's an interesting name. Ah, Fernino. We go behind against Mallorca. Okay. But, like, who's... Rebe Show me why, yeah, I wasn't really intending to start you as a uh, right back. That's for sure. And it was Fernino who made us... Pa like, his current ability... He's only 20. No way. I guess good finishing, good in the air. Hmm, he's an intriguing prospect, actually. But really, we concede against this man. He's got a couple good attributes. <laughs> he's good in the air, and he's good finishing. So if you provide him with a chance, though, he's probably going to take that. Okay. De Jong. Yeah. Mm, wow. We look poor early. We look very poor early. Okay. Pedri. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Pedri. Oh, De Jong. Didn't I just say that? De Jong, if he gets served on a plate, he's going to take the chances. He's an experienced striker. Excellent. But Pedri. <laughs> we're going to have some fun with Pedri, man. Look, he's just deep in midfield. Beautiful ball. De Jong. Great run, too. It was so good they didn't even take it to VAR. And you know how often they do it in FM22 so far. Okay, not bad. Not bad. I'm glad we're not behind. 
I'm glad we weren't going behind into half time. Oh, we could even take a lead. This would switch it. Let's see, Jordi Alba. Memphis. How did that not go in? How did that not go in? So, yeah, we probably will be taking this. And once more, I love when you can go in a more frustrating way when you've equalized, you've made it 1-1, but the players know, yeah, that hasn't been good enough. And, yeah, they've got that kind of reaction when it's equal now. we can. I think we go on to win this. I mean, sure, that would be nice, <laughs> right? Here we go. Sergio Busquets still got that interception. See, who's going to be the future prospect of him? Like, that, you know, that DM, that holding, where he's been for years. Demir, Pedri. Here we go. Waiting for the opening. Didn't come. De Jong, you could easily drop De Jong, but I think he's he's a different type of player. And there's another De Jong, our main striker. But yeah, let me know. Is there someone actually at the club we're missing? Because I feel like the the young midfielders, they're all that creative type and not that defensive mid. Man, I don't want to take Memphis off. I'd even just take off Demir here because we'll bring on Balde. Yeah. Well, yeah, we we still need a winner. <laughs> we still need a winner at this point. And we're wondering where that's going to come from. Memphis. Wow. Poor, but we get it back. Now, Balde, can he show something? Get the overlap to Roberto. Even Roberto is not that pure quick attacking fullback type. So, De Jong, oh, beautiful. Memphis, you got to, okay. They defended that well, but that's going to allow us. That's going to allow us, and what a sub. I wasn't expecting it. Alejandro Balde, let's go. Uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that type of goal from him, a header, but that was really neat, and I didn't mind that because I think if Memphis took the shot, he may have not scored on that angle. So how they pressured us, I think it played out to our advantage in the end. But yeah, if we go over to our stats, which I prefer to be looking at as well. Yeah, bold day. For some of the, yeah, his, his aerial ability. Hey, his jumping reach is going up. I love how we see that in the game. But yeah, someone like 176 centimeters. For that to be the avenue of his goal, we take it. Now... Could be another. And suddenly we've got a 2-0 lead and Lu Diong has got his sixth goal of the season. It's not like we made a massive change, but maybe the pressure is finally showing. And great finish by De Jong. Oh, and a highlight instantly. Let's see what this comes to, though. Hopefully we don't concede instantly. There's Lee. Oh, no, that looked offside. That one looked off. Is that not even going to be called? <laughs> They're not even reviewing that. It's weird how they pick and choose with those, but that goal just got cancelled out by us. Like, yeah, our goal just got cancelled out with this one. Ah, we can't see it on this angle. But strange how it wasn't reviewed, like some others have been. That's a little disappointing. Uh, Coutinho time now. I think it's Coutinho for Pedri. Pedri, yeah, Pedri's been solid today, but don't forget he's come back from an injury. Coutinho, not bad in that role. Yeah, three-star. You'd say probably his best. Then Alba to come off, and we are... This next sub we're wondering about. Is there Gavi again? Yeah, for De Jong, hasn't done anything special. <laughs> Does drop a lot in the rating, but it's still, yeah, one of his best positions. Uh, roles. And here we go. This will make me feel comfortable after that change. Oh, Bolde again! No way! He's got two headers. What? What? By making that sub when we brought him on, this is not what we were expecting. Let alone him just being the match winner, but both of his goals coming from his head, what? What? Not complaining about it, <laughs> just definitely surprised. But it's what he was improving in, in one of his attributes, the jumping reach. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we've seen that in action. So I wonder how much that's actually connected with him scoring those goals today. They've definitely connected on his head. They really have done. Oh, come on, let's finish it with one more. I know we're about to enter the fifth minute. Please don't... Be it's not going to matter. We've got the three points. Maybe you wonder if you concede another. 
But no, we hold on. We hold on there <laughs> to only conceding two on the day, but we scored four. You do wonder defensively. I'd, I'd say we're far from perfect defensively this season, but we're winning games, so how much of a concern is it? Uh, I mean, we're the only team, yeah, looking at some that have only played their second. Well, yeah, they've only played two. No, yeah, no other team can be have, have a perfect start to the season like we had. That says a lot. Says a lot only three games in. So we go to the inbox now. Any messages on that? De Jong sends us top. I like this reply. I wouldn't stop him for anyone, not even Harry Kane. That's like reading Harry Kane as like the best striker in the game. Maybe not showing it that much in real life this season. I like that's like a cool thing. You know, you like compete you wouldn't stop him for anyone, not even Harry Kane. Like, yeah. Not the fact Harry Kane, that's probably not gonna happen. But it's more the fact comparing him to the best striker in the game. Yeah, that's interesting. I'd probably take Kane, to be fair, but De Jong's doing a great job killing it. So, yeah, we're going to leave it there for now. As I said, we're going to play a bit more off-camera right now. So, hopefully, you guys will like that setup and will allow more progression. And you can see we're, like, really, we're probably going to dominate. Uh, we're getting some good football going. So, yeah, give a thumbs up. Uh, let me know how you guys want to see these real bit rebuilding series going forward in the future as well, as I want to do more, uh, more of these, you can kind of see they're kind of a bit of a wave on YouTube. So, uh, yeah, I want to start to yeah, do more of these. So I want to see progression. Don't want to just be stuck with doing it with Barca for the whole year. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, we're going to see that as we go forward because I'm really enjoying it as well. So we're, we're focused on our project with Barcelona, but going forward in the future, I'll be looking towards my next one. So yeah, hopefully you enjoy the videos going forward. And the ones currently at the same time, I've got a journeyman series, hopefully enjoying all the FM content. See you guys next time.